Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Oxford Public Library. Uh, my name is Jama Berman. I'm the director of the um, Adult Services Department here at Oxford. Um, we are excited and uh, thrilled to have Ruth Foreman, our local artist, here today to demonstrate her watercolor styles. Um, she is here as a part of our Waterways exhibit, sponsored by Friends of the Library and the Fort County Community Foundation. This exhibit explores the relationship between people and water. It explores the centrality of water in our lives, <clears throat> including its effect on the environment and climate, its practical roles in agriculture and economic planning, and its impact on culture and spirituality. I'd like to introduce our guest, Ruth Foreman. She is a Michigan Water Color Society signature member and Great Lakes Fellow. Ruth is Costa Rican born. She's a Amer Costa Rican born American artist who has been studying under recognized international artists in Europe, Costa Rica, and USA. She has been invited in different watercolor societies as guest speakers and giving demonstrations. Also, she's been teaching and sharing her work for over a decade. Ruth has exhibited and won awards worldwide and is a member of many watercolor societies. Please join me in welcoming Ruth Foreman today at the Oxford Thank Public you. Library. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you. Hi everybody, thank you so much for coming today for my demo. My name is Ruth Foreman, and like Emma said, I am originally from Costa Rica, but I've been living here in the uh, United States for 28 years. And um, I am uh, living here in Oxford for about 26 years. Very, um, we really enjoyed Oxford, nice, beautiful town. And I've been doing, um, Watercolor, I will say, it, um, I started since 2010, around that, more into watercolors. But all my life I've been uh, working with um, um, art creation. I started in Costa Rica with music, um, and then I moved my career to fine arts. And then I moved to, uh, here to the United States, and I pursued my career. So I've been studying with um, few artists, uh, very famous people from all the world, in Spain, a lot in Spain, in the United States, in Costa Rica. I belong to different organizations, the Michigan Watercolor Society to start, and I am a signature member um, and a fellow member too. Uh, to the International Watercolor Society, to the Costa Rica, International Watercolor Society, uh, a group from Spain that uh, we call the um, events um, watercolorists from Spain. It's actually like an international group. And um, I've been doing this for a few years and I love it, I love it and I love to teach. I've been teaching um, here in Michigan and for many, many years um, through the community here in Oxford and different places and um, so this is what I do, watercolor. Right now I am more into watercolors, but I love um, acrylics medium. I used to also work with acrylics, it's fun to do it. Oils, not too much, but um, once in a while I do some oils, especially right now that we can do the uh, watercolor, eh, the water oils. So they are not that messy and too much odor. And um, I brought with me uh, a few of my um, samples of what I do, um, different paintings to demonstrate about that water. So this is all about it today, about water with the Smithsonian um, exhibition. And uh, water is everything that we need. So in watercolor, of course, everything is, a water, is water. I always tell my students is just let the water and the pigment work, and that's it. They do everything for you. We don't have to mess too much with our brushes, and it is a, just a journey, going with the flow. So today I am going to do, um, if we have time, a couple demonstrations. Um, of course, because today is a very, very snowy day, so um, I'm going to play a little bit with the snow, so <laughs> I'm going to play painting the snow today and then if I have some time I will light it up 
with a little color and we're gonna do some flowers. So um, I'm gonna work uh, or talk a little bit about the materials that I use. So materials that I use, uh, of course, is the watercolor paper. So I love to use, that is a personal choice. I love to use Arches, it's an excellent paper. And I always suggest to people that they want to start uh, playing with this uh, medium, uh, get the best that you can get. Always get the best that you can get because it's not the same to work with um, a good quality of paper that using uh, something inexpensive. So this, uh, what I like to use is because it's 100% cotton and um, it's 140 pounds uh, rough. Um, so in this particular paper it has a texture and I love it because when you paint, you leave your strokes and leave some marks. So it gives a lot of texture in your painting. Um, of course, because it's water, um, cotton 100% is gonna absorb all the water. So if you work with a really an expensive paper, so you are not going to achieve exactly the same thing that you are going to do with this paper because it's going to help you to work. Um, also, brushes, brushes, you know, so many kind of brushes. Uh, people, they always ask, okay, what brushes do I use? And I will recommend also to use the best that you can get, that you can pack it, can afford actually. But um, we have um, synth synthetic brushes, we have uh, also natural bristles, for example, we have sable, we have a um, wolf, we have goat, and all these natural bristles, what it does is they're gonna hold all the water, a lot, a lot of water. So that is gonna help us to paint better or different, depend on the technique that we are doing. But uh, for example, if we also play with a synthetic brushes, they are good too. So they are good, especially when you are lifting. And in watercolor, like in another medium, is about techniques. But watercolor, like I said, is water. Let the water flow and let the water do everything. So pretty much we don't need to do anything. It's just let the pigments to work and that's it. Don't mess with the brush, touching and removing or not because actually what it happens is that we make the watercolor, the paint, muddy. When we start moving and touching and all this stuff, it turns muddy. So we just drop the pigment with water and let it flow, let it be. Always I said that and it's like a, an advice for my students, let it be, let it just be patient and um, the watercolor is working alone with the timing. So sometimes I like to use, depend when I am in a rush or something, uh, the um, blower to dry, to speed the, the dry process, but it's better to let it go um, with time because like I said, the, the pigments are still merging, they are touching, they are working over there. So today, I'm going to start, like I said, because it's a snowy day, so we're going to work in some um, watercolors with the snow. So these are some samples over here, for example, with the snow, 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 snow. So, so many things. That in the corner is the snow. And if you guys pay attention in the paintings uh, that I brought for samples, it's snow white, right? But really it's not white. If we pay attention, it's a lot of colors over there because all is like a mirror. So it's, it's actually is what we see in the sky is gonna reflect in that snow. So we have to paint, put a lot of colors, a lot of blue because it's cold. So this is the sensation that we have to give, for example, when we are painting cold scenery. So we use cold colors and a lot of colors over there, it's not just white. Now remember another thing very important with um, watercolor technique, we use the paper, the white of the paper, 
reserve, we reserve that for the light, right? Versus, for example, when we play with acrylics, we start with dark and we need to add some highlights or something. We just grab a little bit of white and then put it on. In watercolors, no, we reserve the white of the paper. So a lot of people say that it's a very difficult technique and I would say no. Uh, you know, all that mediums, they are pretty much the same. So it's just play, play with that. Every single medium has their own beauty. Um, acrylics, beautiful, uh, oils, beautiful. Any medium that we do in all the kinds uh, or ways to art, and watercolor is beautiful and is very forgiving. You can fix it, you can lift. If you don't like some color, you can lift it up and then put more or rem add more. And um, so, yes, we can play with no problem. So we are gonna work with a little, it's a feel over there from up north actually, with um, a tree. I love painting trees, that's one of the um, trees that uh, he, wore, he won an award with the Michigan Watercolor Society. And I, I, loved, I love to paint trees. That's a few of the ones that I've done. So techniques, we are gonna talk today about techniques a little bit for people that they don't know. Um, they wanna learn more about watercolor. So it's a lot of different techniques over here. One in particular is wet and wet technique. So wet and wet technique is when we wet the paper with a lot of water and then we dump pigment very wet, the brush absorbing these bristles, they are absorbing over here, so that's wet and wet. And depends, in my case, it depends what I'm painting, so I use the different techniques. Sometimes I use my brush really wet in a dry paper and I just wet it alone as I go. Sometimes it depends when you want to capture like a far away blurry so that technique is wet and wet. So it's gonna give you that sensation. So we're gonna start working over here. Working. Wetting the paper. If you guys have any question, please let me know. I don't mind, I can answer some questions that you guys have. So I'm gonna wet the top part of my painting. And if you notice, I am wetting the whole thing, including the tree that I'm going to paint over there, right? Instead to go like a long side over here and one side of the tree. Now, my way to paint, eh, that's one of the things that characterize me, eh, is that I am very loose. I am a loose painter, very color. I use a lot of color. I don't know because I, my Costa Rican background or so that I, <laughs> I like to use a lot of colors, but that's one of my um, um, characteristics. So colors, I'm gonna use in my palette. Usually I don't like to go right straight from the pigment to the paper. We always mix it over here and I, whatever, it feels like in that moment I will use it. So I'm gonna start dropping. You see, when I mean to drop, I just very gentle, my hand is like a brush, it's a, a feather I mean. Very gentle, I just drop the color over there, let it go, let it go. Not messing around, touching, This is gonna be the sky. Look at how beauty is there. I'm gonna start warm it up a little bit. The horizon line over here. And when I said before, you see, if you guys notice over here, 
look at all the water my paper is really wet i don't know if you guys can see and i always kept this little bubble over here with water but i did not touch i just placed my brush with the pigment and let it be and that is by itself is doing that it's merging merging all the colors over there without touching so i don't mess that and it's going to be a nice clean uh, look also because like i said before if you start messing around what happens is going to get muddy so i just place that now over here yes we are doing a wet and wet technique so i wet the paper first and now with a brush this is a natural this is a sable brush it keeps a lot of water over here it's really absorbing a lot so it's wet because my brush is wet wet and wet technique so i'm gonna work a little bit in that and start adding a little bit of the background over here now remember this is all way over there back in the field it's not in the front Look at that beautiful colors over here that start coming. And also, you see, you can start playing over here, moving that water, that is all about water. We are moving, look at how it looks so beautiful. And it gives us also the illusion of the trees in the background because it's too far away actually my focal point is gonna be this area over here the tree everything else is just in the background so it just i am um, giving the impression far away of the trees so i don't need to come like a lot of people they when they are working with a photograph or something they just want to do a little branch over here another branch over here even and you even can see that because it's uh, what half a mile away or something so this is what it happened just let it be and of course you have to have be patient be patient and let it dry little by little over here in order to continue it so because my tree i'm looking over here in this painting I still have to come, when it dries a little bit, I still have to come and give a little more of this color here, the um, trees in the background. But if I place that right now because it's too wet, it's going to keep um, merging and blurring over there. So I'm going to just let a little bit to wait. Now, um, Another thing in watercolor that is very important is um, when we want to play in something light in watercolor, so what do we do? Add more water. So watercolor light is more water than a pigment, so it's a lot of water. When we want to do, remember, in all the art um, in paintings, we need the values, dark, medium, and light. So for medium, in this case, I need like a medium value over here. I'm going to take a little bit of the water, so less water and a little more pigment to achieve that. And when I go to do that really dark, 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 so the painting, so it's kind of um, pigment. It's very, very, very little water. So that's another thing other that you have to with the time when you are painting knowing your medium and get uh, familiar with that and how do you understand that of course it's going to be with time so practice practice and practice and practice practice with your paper uh, different papers different brushes different uh, pigments of course i repeat that once again uh, use the best that you can afford same with the pigments uh, buy good quality of pigments, good quality of brushes, good quality of paper, because this is the only thing that you are using over here, right? 
So um, I think this is getting, you see the bubble over here. Now we can remove a little bit, you see, absorbing the water with the brush. We are just with a, this brush is thirsty, removing a little bit over here. And I'm gonna come back again. Less water, like I said before, a little less water, more pigment to come back and do this um, lines over here in the back. That's gonna be my trace. So I'm gonna suggest over here with these strokes that I'm giving because this paper is rough so it's gonna give you look at how beauty that texture over here I'm gonna give a little texture over here so it's all about techniques These are all my trees over there. I'm gonna start looking very beautiful. These are short trees far away. So we avoid a, you know, half like a straight line that is more boring. So we try to do some ins and out, ins and out to make it more interesting. For example, in this corner over here, in this little over here, with different techniques like a dry brush. This is a dry brush technique over here. So we have right now two techniques, wet and wet and dry brush. Okay. So it's making the paint, the painting more interesting. Also, if you guys look over here in this guide, I can talk what is drying. So we have soft edges. So soft edges is when it's not a sharp edge over here, like a sharp edge over here, a lot of, a lot of sharp edge over there. So we have to always think about that sharp edges, soft edges, because it's part of that different techniques. So I can start working over here. Okay. So that's pretty, it's still very wet, very, very wet. So, but I can start working in my main character over here. That's the, the main thing, that's the, my focal point where I'm gonna put more interesting over here. So focal point, like I said, I don't wanna work too much in the background because I want all the eyes right in this point here. So I'm going to start working in that tree. Look at any questions? No. So right now I am dropping a couple colors over here right away. I'm going to um, keep my light in the left side and start working in that dry technique over here to give me that this richness over here look at this look like a snow by itself I don't have to work much Now the trees, if you look for example in this tree over here, you see that's a tree, that's my interpretation, this is an old maple. So it's all these beautiful colors, it's not necessary that the tree has to be always brown, no. You just use your imagination and use the colors that you want.
same thing, dry technique over here, to achieve this natural look of the snow. Just place your brush. So I just let it dry a little bit over here, but I can still now working over here. I still don't want to touch this much because it's, you can see over here it's still a little wet. Same over here, it's still damp, getting dry but not much. But if I want some areas to come down, you see, when I touch, look at what happened over here. I want some areas dry, like these ones for example, and another ones to touch that. Like here, for example, look at what happened. The water is moving because it's all about water. So it's moving very nice. And it's no, it's white, but really it's not white. It's a lot of colors over there. It's all the reflection from the sky. So we have to drop some of that blue from the sky because it's like a mirror. And let it be. So I want to have some soft edges because the snow, if now that is a nice good example outside, if you guys pay attention in the snow you can see some fluffy snow, very soft, but also you can see the heart of the snow, depending if on the edge of the road or something, it's, very, it's a piece of ice pretty much. So you have to give that also to your painting, demonstrate a tree also, you know, has very, the texture is a very rough texture. So clouds that are soft so this is why we try to achieve also with these techniques like i said wet and wet so it's all this softness in the sky over here the far away so blurry and in this case over here this is a nice example here for example this um, really rough edge from the snow versus fluffiness of the snow okay so all about techniques. Now this over here, what is happening? Yes, it's blurry over here, blurry over here. I love it, I let it go, but I have to let it dry in order to come back and play more with all that elements over here that is my focal point. So I can just keep going in the front over here. I can just, I'm going to leave some white of the paper. I can touch a little bit of that to do what I have in here also. Put some more blue, probably celerium blue, wet and wet, let it be. And because I'm coming to the front of my scenery here, I'm going to warm it up a little bit. Justifying all these colors that I have over here, that sienas, the orange also, they have to be in different places, like over here, over here, over here, here, okay? So that is coming nicer. Now, I move now to the, I just depend what I'm doing. I go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'm gonna move again to the top over here to suggest a little bit that um, depth of the field over there.
I'm gonna switch the brush over here for a fine one. Now we are using less water, more pigment because I wanna suggest some trees here and there like a just see over here in this area. So like I said before, instead of having like a straight, straight boring line, this area over here, start looking far away. It looks like at the, the trunks of the trees, here and there, here and there. And avoid repetition. Instead to make like a fence, all the little trees over there, just different sizes, positions. Okay, now this point also I can splatter some water with my fingers, very gentle over here. Water, 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 this is all about water. Same over here, I don't know if you guys can see what happened in this area, when I do in the splatter over here, see it breaks, so it starts looking like a snow. Okay, now this tree, the main character of the movie, is getting drier, so we're gonna work in hand more. This is pretty much done, the background is pretty much done, I don't have to do much because that's what I'm gonna work more, okay? Over here, just a little bit later on, but here, just a little dry to come back here. So I'm gonna put a little bit, um, like I said before, more details, so that's like a medium values over here, so I will come with less water. Any questions? No questions. texture in the tree, look at just really a fast stroke that is going to give me that dry brush technique over here and it looks like at the trunks over here, see, you guys look in this area, it's a good sample. Dry technique, dry technique. dry brush all the muddy from the tree coming out showing I can lift a little bit either with a brush for example when I'm talking about lifting and watercolors this is what I mean with, by that with a I usually use a synthetic brush with it up a little tiny bit and very dry over here blood I think my bro in my napkin I like to use these napkins because they are kind of cotton and absorb pretty good so lifting okay that's a example lifting is with a clean brush clean brush dry the brush and then I'm gonna do that you see the highlight over here so we are removing the paint so this is a lifting technique so we are removing the paint, so in some areas I want to have some highlight, so I can touch over here, for example, look at and lift. Also, I can do that, for example, remove it and then blot it. So some lights over there in the tree, you see, same over here, it's like I give my, actually it's giving like, um, when it's snowing, it's blowing the snow, a little limb. Um, that it looks like a foggy. Same over here, look at lifting. And this. All right. 
also because it's wet, the steel is wet, I can drop more colors and it's gonna flow with there. All the pigment is going to flow into my painting, but and I am adding a lot of uh, pigment over here. So it's floating. Look at how beautiful. And I am not touching anything, I just drip and that's it, let it be. More water over here. I can wet a little bit here. Still, and I can splatter. And all this is for what? To give more texture to your painting, make it more interesting. And um, you know that the photograph is um, I'm working with a photograph. It's a reference, but I don't want to see that much because when you look in the photograph, so you are tight over there and you don't let your your creativity go. So always over here. So this is just a reference. I just saw enough. I don't need it more. So I can do whatever I want. This is my painting and this is my art. So I do whatever I want. It's not a rules over here. So just enjoy it. I always, I said, enjoy what you do because every single piece, always, even people that just started in this medium, is beautiful, it's unique, and you have to be proud what you do. Over here, okay, I'm gonna start working in some things over here from the tree. Change a little bit the mood of the warm it. Change brushes to give a little more aim. Um, different uh, size of that branches, not too thick. Different colors. You can use your fingernails in order to make some texture. You see this one over here? Look at how beautiful. You can use a palette knife, you can use your fingernails, you can use a stick, you can use many things. So for example here, to create texture, okay? Now when you go out, so you're gonna pay more attention, for example, in trees, in the snow, and when you are painting don't hesitate in your strokes because it's gonna show. Don't be afraid, just go for it. Be secure. Trust yourself. And yes, we can use white. Titanium white, Chinese white. Right now, this is um, it's not a, um, you can't. You can use it to some highlights, yes. Even the master ones, they use the titanium white and it's, a, a, it's okay.
texture. And I think my painting is done. So in this sample over here, this demo, I taught you guys a few techniques. So a lot of techniques, uh, wet and wet, dry and wet, dry brush technique. Um, different terminologies like a soft edge, hard edge, spattering, all the we did with the pigment or just with water, scratching, using your nails, using a palette knife, using anything that you want to use, uh, removing also or lifting. You can do it with a napkin, you can use with a brush. A lot of stuff going on over here so this is what I when I do a demo it's not about really much the painting to have a beautiful or not paint is techniques so people understand what is watercolor and in the end like I said in the beginning what is water 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 and water and pigment but of course it's more water let it be let it move by itself because um, it won't be the same if you just don't use enough water some people they and come to classes, they use a little teeny cup with water, and no, they have to use a bucket with water, move it, uh, play with that, because this is watercolor. So you cannot paint, or with just a little pigment, or if you guys look my palette over here, look at this, all messy, dirty. That's the beauty of, you just touch everything over here without going from pigment to the paper, don't touch this paint to the other one, but no mix your colors and this is how we learn so just i'm waiting over here to dry a little teeny bit and when my painting is done a question people ask me when are you done when i sign <laughs> so i'm gonna let it just dry a little teeny bit and i like uh, i don't know why but i like to dry all this a uh, sign with a uh, red probably one of my things I use the brush. So here you go. That's a landscape watercolor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you. It's been a pleasure having you here today. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate learning in depth of how you go about creating these wonderful works of art. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. We really um, inspire people, and we're excited to have a recording of this, this event here today that will go on, on, on the community website as well. So thank you very much for having me, and thank you, everybody, for coming today. Thank um, you. You're very welcome. Thank, thank you. you. We hope to have you again soon. Thank you. Uh -huh. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm.